so hello guys welcome back to my channel so what i have here is mg's newest competitor in the b segment subcompact sedan category what i have here is the all new mg gt take note this is a separate model from the mg5 so you get two choices from the subcompact sedans for mg being the mg gt sport this is the top of the line version so this is what we'll be focusing here today and let's start with the looks right away this 3D flaming grill design. This is probably now one of the most striking subcompact sedans out there. And I really love this grill now. It is so striking to look at. And there's a massive opening in the grill to cool the engine. And this part, this carbon fiber trim, you decide if this is real or not. And surprisingly, for a sporty subcompact sedan, the ground clearance is 145 millimeters, which isn't the lowest in its class, but it's right smack above there against the Almera and the Honda CTRS. And I love this gray part of the grill. And funny enough, the vents here do not function whatsoever, but this one does. And then you have cameras here above on the big MG badge and right above here for your 360 degree camera and more of the safety features i'll just display it here on screen because i won't mention that and there is a lot of them and for this gt sport brand you get 17 inch two-tone alloy wheels you get only 16s for the alpha variant but it's still the same design this tomahawk design tomahawk chop here on the side mirror you have led repeaters here and a 360 degree camera right down below and as well the side mirrors have a defogger function so on the side profile itself, there's few character lines here and there, but I like the rear quarter panel. There's like a crease and a character line, and the fenders give the MG GT a wide body look. So here now at the rear of the MG GT, this rear quarter up to there is my favorite part of this MG5 GT because it takes a lot of cues from not just European brands, but from Japanese brands too. So if you see this on the side, this chrome bit here, it reminds me a bit of the Honda Civic FC and the Mercedes CLA. So I love the mixed designs here with this MG GT. And in this yellow color, it's probably my new favorite color now, not the red again for some reason. You can tell this is not related to the MG5 because it only says here MG GT, their GT badge is also red. And just being honest, you can see here the sport badge here. I mean, that's how you can tell the variants of the MG GT, but I really wish they could have done better for this part because I'm not a fan of this design. So you have a reverse camera here, the MG badge, and then below here you have a diffuser and there's fake exhaust. But at least you have two real ones just down below. And another nitpick, like in the MG5, you will still hit your head when you open the trunk lid, but there's another addition now. Watch how fast this opens. Yeah, I mean, you'll get headshot immediately with this trunk lid. You can see, if I put stuff in and out, you'll definitely hit your head in this trunk lid, so watch out for that. But it does make up here with the boot space. So the total space here is 401 liters, and the load lip is kind of high, almost the size of my hand, but since being a subcompact sedan, getting stuff in and out won't be such of an issue. You have an LED light illuminating the boot, and I love the strap here for the floor storage. There's red accents on the strap. Then open it up, it reveals your space saver donut type tire. And I'm not kidding because I remembered someone commented on my MG5 review that you're so stupid, why would you hit your head in the trunk lid? Because on my car, when I open the trunk, I can put stuff normally without hitting my head. I mean, this it will literally hit your head. Taller people will definitely hit their head if you're putting stuff here in the boot. So that's about it here with the exterior and the boot of the MG GT. I'll show you the interior. So this is the interior of the all new MG GT. And big reveal time. Oh my! One more time! Best door tad in an MG ever! Woo! That, that's way better than the HS and the ZST. Oh my gosh! So, the build quality in here actually, besides the door, everything here now is excellent. A lot has improved and especially these seats. There's like a honeycomb design here on this part of the seat and there's a red accent over here as you can see but the whole seat itself is leather and it's so soft but it still tends more on the sportier side like in the ZST I mean look how much bolstering that is the ZST seat 
seems a little bit tighter than this. Also, I have a part 2 review of the MG ZST. It's more of an additional driving impressions compared to last year's review. So, check that out. The link of that will be in the description down below. So, back to this MG GT. And the first thing I noticed immediately in this cabin are the paddle shifters. These are only available for the sport model. They feel somewhat the same with the HS. So let's start here in the door. We have a lot of plastics here and there. But yet again on this part, you have that honeycomb design again. And with red stitching. At least there's still leather here for your elbows. And then you have two cubby spaces and bottle holders on each side. My big water jug fits perfectly. Here on the left side, you have an air conditioning vent with brushed aluminum and then further down below you have headlight adjustments and adjustments for your side mirror so here now in the steering wheel very similar to all of the other mgs like the zst it's leather but more of the durable side of things but still lovely to touch and there's red stitching around the spokes itself and it's not rough compared just being honest like a chevrolet tracker the stitching here is on point the dashboard is set really really low so visibility throughout here is excellent for the front and the AP pillar is not that big mm. yeah as you can see being the sloping roof design of this mg gt the c pillar is kind of big but it makes up for it besides the side mirrors your 360 degree camera so turn this on for the ignition only you still have that 12.3 inch virtual instrument cluster very similar to the mghs but there's new stuff here i love this part of the instrument cluster where it says for your fuel efficiency, it says they're intense. <laughs> mm. <laughs> we'll go back to the instrument class, I might forget this one. So here in the dashboard, it still continues the brushed aluminum. Honeycomb Pentagon stuff here on the red passenger side. So I noticed immediately in this cabin, the theme here is more of like honeycomb and squared-ish looks here. And then you have a squared 10-inch infotainment system that supports Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And the quality for the 360-degree cameras is decent, but at least there is. The 3D mode, okay, it's very responsive. There's a lot of points in it, wherever you want to look. It's somewhat responsive. The 2D, not too bad. And there's a zoom button for either at front or the rear. And the response of the infotainment system itself is pretty decent too. So going back here to the virtual instrument cluster, there is a lot of stuff you can do and it's somewhat responsive too and the animations of it in the instrument cluster is also very good. And I just saw it now, there's a little mascot here on the left side of the infotainment system. So there's a lot of racing sporty themes here in the MG GT. Back here in the steering wheel, for your left side, it's your standard NG, you have your controls for your infotainment system and for your phone connectivity and on the right side you have your voice command button and adjustments for the instrument cluster. So below the infotainment system, you have buttons here for your climate control. It's no longer the toggle up and down Lamborghini style switches compared like in the ZST. You only have to press all of this down to activate the functions here but at least there's not much blanks here, just two on the edges, but it's fine. And I love the position of the start-stop button. It's also covered in aluminum. And then below that, two air conditioning vents. Okay, there's a lot of gloss black in here for the dashboard, but you're not going to be touching that part anyway, so it's fine for me. And then further down below, you have two USB ports, one 12 volt socket, and a cubby space for your phone. And you can fit bigger phones here, for example, like the i phone 14 pro max whatever generation it is already and this does not have a wireless charging pad but the pad itself can charge your keep fob at least and then here in the gear lever it looks all right i love the brushed aluminum around the gear lever but there's a ton of gloss black but around the electronic parking brake yeah that's gloss black but that's the only part you'll be touching that's gloss black related at least you have still have an auto hold function and i find it funny the unlock for the gear levers here on the left side but at least that's aluminum. And then further behind, you have two cup holders with plastic grips. Just fits my water jug. Doesn't go all the way in, but at least it holds it in place. I mean, look, it's hard to get out. <laughs> and this center console box here, yeah, there's gloss black around it, as you can see here. But this has to be the biggest piece of a center console box I have ever seen. And the space inside, okay, pretty decent. You can fit a few phones there at least. Then above here, you have your lights and controls for the sunroof. So this and the M Grand, as far as I know only, are the only ones in its class that have a sunroof. Correct me in the comments down below. It's been a while since I've driven subcompact sedans. Then sunglasses holder here. 
visor. You have a vanity light with mirror, but I don't have the key. That's why the lights are not just turning on. Ticket clip holder, but sadly they don't extend. Anyway, it's fine. The biggest highlight for me here in this interior is the visibility out front, paddle shifters, and the seats. These are the sportiest, but yet the most comfortable ones I've tried out so far in this class of sedans. So that's about it here in front of the MG GT. I almost said MG5 GT. So that's about here in front. I'll show you the rear seats. So these are the rear seats of the MG GT yet again. Perfect. As well, these door tabs are very much comparable or a little bit better than the Geely M Grand. So space here in the back, it's among the spacious ones in its class. So fit room, new room, infinite. However though, the headroom is not that great. But I have enough space. I'm 5'4". So this is my headroom. So yeah, just watch out for the sloping roof design. But at least they made up a slope here on the roof because to accommodate the sunroof and taller people like around 5'7", five, 5'8". Five, but at least despite the sloping roof design, there's a lot of light coming in. I mean, there's a corner window here too. Here in the door card, pretty much the same in front. You still have the leather honeycomb here. And for your elbows with the red stitching. And then you have smaller cubby spaces and bottle holders on each side. And for some reason, my water jug fits here way better than the ones in front. And then you have two map pockets on each side. And then in the middle, you have a lone air conditioning vent and a lone USB port. But hey, at least there is. And there's a cubby space down below, not advisable for your phones. So similar things with the M Grand besides the one in the middle, there is no cent alarmist. Why? <laughs> yeah, I mean for this price and this day and age, you're supposed to have a cent alarmist. But again, with the seats like in front, there's this leather is really soft and there's the design here with the honeycomb and red part of leather again here. So if I sit now here in the middle, transmission panel is very tall but very narrow you can simply put your feet up no issues okay it's a little bit harder to sit here in the middle but still somewhat comfortable since this is all leather and oh yeah i forgot to mention so like the mg5 you can fold down the seats here it's a 0 to 100 layout meaning this is just one whole piece but at least you can fold it down so this is very similar to a honda accord the layout of the seats and the mg5 as for mentioned be honest i expected a bit more or i just assume because there's the lack of the central armies but that's pretty much it and you have two isofix anchor points on each side and yeah, plain seat belts. I was expecting the red one like the one in the boot. So, that's about it here in the rear seats and the interior of the MG GT. Let's talk about now the biggest talking point of this GT is the engine. So, there are two engines available for this MG GT. A moment. So, first is the one and a half liter naturally aspirated four cylinder engine that produces 114 horsepower and 150 newton meters of torque. So this sport variant has a one and a half liter turbocharged four cylinder engine that produces 161 horsepower and 250 newton meters of torque. Then this one is mated to a seven speed TST aka dual clutch transmission. So the drive team of this is very much the same that of the MGHS. I have a review of that as well. As well, this engine is a little bit more tightly packaged. As you can see, there's a lot of space here in front, especially at the rear. So this is as far as I go with this MG GT. So I'd like to thank again MG Quezon Avenue, Miss May and Miss Jonna for making this walk around review possible. So hopefully there will be a demo unit coming soon so i cannot wait to drive this as well and to see if this is the new king of the b segment subcompact sedan category so hope you guys like and subscribe and i will see you with more mg reviews bye bye